part video tutorial on interpreting histograms. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. All right, so we've learned in our previous videos how to create histograms, but what's even more important is what do they tell us? And, and that's the big issue that we're really confronted with because we're trying to use data to tell us something about our data so we can learn from the data that we see or that we observe in a real life setting and now we want to be able to describe larger patterns in it than what happened on individual number levels and the histogram allows us to do that and allows us to say some basic things about how these ver values come about and how they're spread out okay so uh, you can go to the repository and there is testing2.csv you can read that in and we'll do that here real quick and we'll look to see what the data uh, looks like so it's grade 6 grade 8 and grade 11 uh, scores on a specific uh, type of test that they take for I think math interest uh, and these are the numbers off some rather long test but anyway don't worry about that what we want to do is actually look at these and see what we can say about the distribution of each one of these variables or their test scores so let's do grade six first let's put this in uh, our comment all right so we're going to do histogram we're going to do score one dollar sign grade six i'm going to do main equals grade six and our x label is going to be the score and i can interpret this once i run this but i'm trying to get you to think about how you want the picture to look before you generate it sometimes it's always good to just go back and do this so if i do this i can see well this one uh gives me a generally a symmetric sort of distribution notice that scores that are really low or quite rare notice this is frequency doesn't happen very often nor do scores that are high happen very often and that's interesting uh, that we have this sort of distribution most people are in the middle there's a high frequency between 0.5 and 0.6 and not so much out on the ends so there's four things that we're going to look for here and let's write those down and then answer them so you can use this as sort of a template uh, so four things to worry about okay so the first one is the shape of the distribution so we would be looking for is it symmetric is it skewed uh, and it could be right or left is it bimodal trimodal uh, what sort of picture does it show us uh, we're gonna look for the center where does this thing seem to have the middle of it be uh, if we had to guess what the middle value was we want to know what the spread is how spread out is this data and we also want to know if there's something unusual uh, so usual features and those could be gaps or extreme values or anything else that you see that just is seems weird uh, but uh, that's why it's called unusual features so for this particular one we'll zoom in again uh, this seems to be symmetric so if we were to answer this for ours so for grade six we see the shape is symmetric it appears to be centered around a half so you put the center about one half the spread how far out does that actually go and if I look at it it actually looks the scale shows us from zero to one so the spread is from zero to one and if you had to give a specific number the range which is the maximum minus the minimum is one from what we can tell or approximately one uh, the other thing is are there any unusual features and in this case there's really nothing odd so no unusual features so this is something you always want to look at on these particular pictures is what does the picture tell us and we can get a lot of information just by looking at the picture so this is what grade six told us 
All right, so let's go. And instead of being uh, wasteful, we'll just copy and paste again. So we'll copy and paste what we had before, bring it down, and then use the next grade. So hit the dollar sign, because I can't remember what grade it was, maybe. And we can do grade 8. Change everything to grade 8. Grade 8. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy and paste my comments here. Why? Because I can just modify them. So let's look at grade 8. So put here grade 8. And it probably, you shouldn't expect it to be the same answer. So let's give this a go. Oh, so this looks very different. So this is clearly skewed to the right. And how you tell is which way does it, the extreme value is being pulled or where it looks like it's being pulled. It looks like it's being pulled to the right uh, from left to right. So this would be skewed right. Uh, let's see, where would we guess the center of this thing to be? I'd probably guess it to be way back here, maybe at 0 0.2, 0 0.19. And, you know, you, you, that's why I use the word about. You're estimating it, so I'm going to say it's about 0.19. Uh, the spread still goes from 0 to 1, but there seems to be a gap. If you look here, there's just a whole lot of nothing going on here uh, between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 and extreme values at the end. So... There is a gap between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, and extreme values near 1. And that's what we would say about that. And that tells us what we can expect about this data. It tells us more generally about the data than individual numbers. All right, so let's copy and paste this as like a template, and put this here and we can do the last grade which was believe was grade 11 change it to 11 and 11 okay so let's see what this looks like we're going to run it and we'll look at the picture uh, oh wait did i change everything no i didn't run it that was my problem okay here we go got a picture so this is interesting looking in the sense that it kind of looks skewed, but it actually looks like there's two peaks. There's a peak over here and a peak over here. So I'm going to say the shape here is bimodal. Um, now I have to guess at where the center is, maybe around 0.4, maybe a little less. So I'm going to go like 0.37 or something as a guess. Uh, spread definitely goes between 0 to 1 in this case still. And is there any unusual features? Not really. Um, it is bimodal. You could say uh, middle values tend to be less likely, something like that, are less likely, meaning that they're not very high on frequency. So uh, it's really important that you put this kind of information uh, whenever you're doing any analysis because later when you have to write up a report, you, you can look at it and just see what you should say about each one of these variables because often you'll be dealing with lots of pictures and lots of things all at once and it's nice just to have it in one place, easy to look at, easy to find. Also, if you're turning this in for this class, I'm expecting you to write these four things. And if you don't write the four things, uh, don't expect to get anything more than probably one point out of five, if it was worth five. Uh, because it's not just making the picture that's important, it's what that picture tells you. All right, so uh, this is the end of our bit on histograms, and we're gonna move on to box plots next.